Well, good evening and happy Thanksgiving again. Um, tonight for uh, my meditation, I just want to simply tell you about a guy who lived at our house when I was growing up. And uh, frankly, to be very honest with you, um, I had a hard time with this guy when we first met. I didn't, uh, I didn't like him very much. Uh, I need to tell you that. Sometimes I had to work really hard to get along with him. But when I first met him, I was probably about two years old, maybe three years old. I don't remember exactly. And my mom, she tried tirelessly to get us together, to spend time together. I'll bet um, when you think about it, he was at your house too. Maybe you were first introduced to him at about that age too. His name is Gratitude. Some people call him Thanksgiving. My mom say things like, Tim, be say thank you to Uncle Vic for that nice shiny silver dog he gave you. And from that time on, this Mr. Gratitude was everywhere. My mom and dad were trying to get us to know him and to get along with him. I mean, we couldn't even grab our fork and our knife and dig into the food without gratitude somehow butting in. Then after the meal, mom would say something like, I didn't hear anybody say thank you for supper tonight. And there he was again, gratitude. Thank you, thank you, mom, we loved it. And even before bedtime growing up, had to pay our respects to this house guest, gratitude. Thank you, God, for mom, for dad, for friends, etc., 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 etc. Old Mr. Gratitude was probably at your house too, wasn't he? And if Mr. Gratitude was at your house when you were growing up. Now, he was there maybe whether you liked it or not at first. Now, naturally, my wife Lori and I, we've introduced gratitude to our kids too and now as they're older we're very pleased that at least sometimes they remember gratitude on their own without us having to remind them but i don't know about how it was for you but for me in my adolescent years especially, i didn't uh, see gratitude all that often in fact i did my best to kind of ignore him I was too busy trying to make it in school or too busy trying to make it in sports, acting a little bit too independent. I do remember, though, one time when gratitude surprised me. I went up with my high school buddies and we went up to the mountains in Northern California where we used to go wintertime ski and we were up on one of the the chairlifts, and we turned around and we saw the beautiful runs with the beautiful snow and the blue mountain lakes in the background, and all of a sudden, gratitude just showed up. I thought, wow, this is, this is awesome, but I kind of turned. I said, what are you doing here, all the way up here? And he said, you know, this is one of my favorite places. I bring millions of people up here, and they're filled with me with gratitude about this time of day. You should try other places, too. You'll find me there. You know, maybe go out to the Black Hills. Gratitude is there all over the place. But you know what? Gratitude showed up. And then by the time I was leaving home for college, going from California out to Iowa, gratitude began to appear more and more and more in my life. In fact, I think that gratitude even helped me pack my suitcase when I was going off to college. I remember having this conversation with a house guest that I got to know at age two or three. He kind of looked at me and said, you know, many people have helped to bring you to this point in your life. And he kind of helped me fold my socks and my pants and put them into the suitcase. And I said, yeah, 
oh, man, there's been a lot of people that have been instrumental in my life that I really need to say thank you to. I just, I don't really know how to do that. How, how do you say thanks for all of that? I mean, all of the, the mentoring and the coaching and parents and their love, all that stuff, it's, I don't know what to say. And gratitude looked at me and he said, you know, that's all right. That's okay. They've taught you. They've mentored you. They've coached you. Your parents have saved as best they can, and now you're going off to college. I think the best way to thank them, you could certainly say thank you, but you could show them. But maybe the best thing to do is just go off to college and do the best you can. Remember everything that they taught you. Especially remember that they taught you about your faith, your faith in God, and that your identity is not wrapped up in what everybody else may say or think about you, but that your identity is wrapped up in what God says about you. A saved person, forgiven, sinner redeemed by the blood of Christ. Just remember all that they've taught you. They did that not expecting big things in return. They just did it because they love you. And boy, I was filled with gratitude. But I said, you know, what if I, what if I go off to college and I leave home and I forget all that stuff or I fail or I don't do well? What then? What should I do? Gratitude said, well, that's okay. You learn from your experiences. You trust God and you just move forward and know that they love you anyway. And he said, here. And he handed me a Bible. And he said, I think you're going to need this where you're going. And I said, you think so? He said, yeah, I think you're going to need this where you're going. Um, and he said, by the way, I'm in here. I'm in here all over the place. Gratitude, sometimes called Thanksgiving. So why don't you take this along when you leave home and make sure that you read it on a regular basis. And so I did. Four years of college. That I was so smart I spread out to five. And then four years in seminary that I was so smart I spread out again to five. Including a year and a half in Brazil. And then I married this wonderful woman. And gratitude kind of loved that time in my life. I mean, whenever I look back on those years of my life, I can't help but do it without gratitude showing up all the time, over and over again. And you know, I could go on and on and on, as you could too, with your life experiences, through the birth of our children, through my experiences at four caring and loving, deeply committed congregations, including this one. Gratitude or sometimes called thanksgiving, becomes part of you after a while. After you kind of learn to live with this, this guy called gratitude who seems to keep showing up all the time. And one day the time comes when nobody even has to tell you to be grateful or to live out of an attitude of gratitude or to live with thanksgiving. And you know, that's the strange thing about gratitude. It, uh, God has a way of working that into our lives where it kind of just becomes part of who we are as people of God. I mean, you think about it. I fully expected my, my friend and house guest gratitude to show up at different times in my life. I expected him to pop up on my graduation day, for example. And he did. He was there. And the day I got married, I expected gratitude to show up then, too. And he did, at least for me. I don't know if gratitude was what my wife would say when we got married, but maybe showed up for her, too. Gratitude showed up on my ordination day. Gratitude was there when my kids were born. I can go through our family albums. You can go through all of your family albums. Look at those pictures and those smiling faces and the good time. And I'll bet you see right there in the background or maybe even in the foreground, gratitude's there. Gratitude is in those pictures. You know, 
Gratitude never misses a Christmas morning. Gratitude never misses a Thanksgiving day. I know that gratitude's here tonight with us. I know he's going to be in your home tomorrow. He's going to be in my home tomorrow. He's going to show up there. But the funny thing about gratitude, and the Apostle Paul, in the verses that Pastor Lauren read earlier, notice what Paul says. He says, rejoice in the Lord, not just on Thanksgiving morning around the turkey and the dinner. Rejoice in the Lord, not just on Christmas morning, or on your graduation day, or the day your child is born. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always. And I have to think about that. He says, don't worry about anything, but in everything by prayer, with thanksgiving, with gratitude, let your requests be made known to God. And we say, really? Is gratitude, are we really sure about that? Rejoice in the Lord always? You mean, you mean always? In Ephesians, Paul echoes these words by saying, always and for everything give thanks. Always and for everything thanks. And I don't know about you, but I kind of say, hey, that's a little bit much. Don't you think? Always, for everything, I don't know about that. I mean, I don't mind if gratitude shows up tomorrow for Thanksgiving. But always, everywhere, in every situation, every life, your life, my life, we know some dark days. We know some tough days. We know some difficult days. And you know, sometimes gratitude is the last person I want showing up in those times. There are times and places, don't you think, when the last word ought not to be, thank you, God. You know, take death, for instance. Grief is present there. That's normal. Appropriate guest. Anger, maybe. Hurt, for sure. Sadness, maybe some doubt. Those are all appropriate at a funeral. But gratitude? Are you kidding me? You think gratitude's going to show up at a time that? I remember when my father died a couple years ago. Guess who showed up? Guess who surprised me? I didn't even expect it. But my good friend, I'd gotten to know him pretty well by then. Gratitude showed up. I was filled with sadness, but boy, thankfulness was right there too. Wow. I sat just yesterday with a man from our congregation, Ron Thorson. Ron and Diana Thorson are very new members to Gloria Day, but Diana had been going through cancer, and she lost that battle to cancer just a couple of days ago. So I was with her husband, Ron, yesterday, and we were praying, we were going through some prayers and reading some scripture passages. We were at Miller Funeral Home, sitting around a table, and I was sitting right next to Ron, and guess who showed up? Guess who showed up? Right at Miller Funeral Home, he sat right next to Ron in the empty chair there. It wasn't empty. It was gratitude. And it was thanksgiving. I thought, wow, maybe Paul's right. Rejoice in the Lord always for everything. Ron Thorson said this. He said, I am so thankful. There's that word. I am so thankful for my years with Diana. She's made my life so rich, so full. I'm thankful to God for the life that we've had together. But I'm mostly thankful to God for the gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ that Diana knows and I know because of faith. Give thanks always, Paul says, and in everything. Rejoice in the Lord always. You see, when gratitude becomes part of you, he shows up and he helps you through even the difficult, dark times of your life. And I know gratitude's going to show up a week from Friday at Diana's funeral right here. Gratitude's going to be there. Going to be there with family, with friends. And so as you gather for Thanksgiving tomorrow with your family, with your friends, the Bible tells 
this correctly, that gratitude is a very appropriate, appropriate guest in your house, appropriate part of every and all situations in life. Because life itself is a gift that's given to you and it's given to me. A gift from a God who loves us, a God who walks with us and celebrates with us in the joys, but walks with us through the difficult times as well. Jesus is a gift to you and to me. And in Christ, in his life, in his death, and in his resurrection, that gives your life meaning. That gives your life significance. That gives your life hope. That fills your life with that good friend, gratitude. So for you and me as Christians, there is really, really, when you think about it, nowhere that gratitude is not an appropriate person to have with you. Gratitude or thanksgiving. They belong everywhere we go. So tonight and tomorrow and every day, as the psalmist writes when he says, as we heard read from Psalm 100, give thanks to the Lord. For he is good, and his steadfast love endures forever. Happy Thanksgiving, and may your life be filled with that constant, constant companion, gratitude or thanksgiving. Amen.